changed a lot in the years that it has been a marketing platform. And since only 28% of marketers worldwide are even using it as a marketing engine, I thought it was high time in February, March of 2022 to release a new best practices video. This week's video is gonna go through all of that the seven things that I think that you should either stop or continue doing or do differently this year in order to continue to grow. In fact, this year I am embracing what I like to call a minimum viable Pinterest solution. What does that mean? What is a minimum viable Pinterest solution? Well, in essence, it's one standard pin per day and one idea pin per week to continue to be consistent because here's where the rubber meets the road. I really hate that term, but here's where it happens, right? A lot of marketers start on Pinterest and they're like, they hear all these crazy things like people getting hundreds of thousands of page views. I have clients that are getting 17 million plus monthly views. Um, I have personally sent over 10 million page views to one of my clients' accounts in three years, three years. You hear these crazy things and in 2022, you may be thinking to yourself, well, is that still possible for me? It's really not, unless you have a very established brand. You have a killer product or content that you sell or give away for free, content you give away for free, and it is something that is like hyper trending on Pinterest right now. Because the truth of the matter is, Pinterest is actually making it harder for people to leave the platform with the introduction of story pins, with the way that they changed video pins a number of years back, it's been like three plus years. It's harder for people to actually leave those pins and go to your profile or go to your domain. So that is where the minimum viable Pinterest strategy comes in in 2022. And that is the one standard pin, one idea pin per week minimum to build a foundation and to begin to build traffic from Pinterest. I think gone are the days of creating a pin and it going crazy viral. You may see those videos on YouTube promising you viral pins if you use trends, if you use keywords, if you do this, if you use idea pins. And at the end of the day, most of that is just garbage. Let's dive into the best practices if you do want to have that minimum viable Pinterest strategy this year. Number one, less repinning, if any at all. And what I mean by that is no, like you don't need to interval pin your pins in order for them to be found anymore. It's not that you can't, I still teach in my academy that you can in a certain way. Um, so if you need more strategy or you want to go into that, then definitely join the academy and learn all about it. But I don't think that you need to be repinning constantly anymore. In fact, if you're going to repin, you're going to space those suckers further apart. Number two is creating a minimum of one idea pin per week. I already mentioned this at the top of the video, but I really think it's important for you, even if you're e-commerce or a content creator, you really should be creating idea pins every single week. I don't think it's going to go away as much as us marketers back in 2019 when story pins were first introduced wanted them to go away forever. It's not going to. They are here to stay. In fact, they are a really good tool for building engagement and audience growth on the platform and then your pins actually being filtered through to those people in their smart feeds and their related feeds. So one idea pin per week and make sure you're using a really, really good call to action. Number three, if you're gonna repurpose, you have to repurpose with purpose. No more just downloading your TikToks and sticking them over on Pinterest. No more downloading your reels and sticking them over there. This is not what we want on this platform. In fact, Pinterest took away the ability to even claim your Instagram account because they do not want to encourage people to push traffic to those kinds of domains. They came out with their own on-platform idea pin, which is like reels and TikToks and stories. They want you to create natively on their platform. So if you're going to create content on other platforms and repurpose it, make sure you watch this video right here 
and learn how to do it the right way. Number four, this is not new, but it is still and will always be a best practice. You should have a fully optimized profile. This is not an option. It is a must. Just like when you create an Instagram profile, if you're trying to find clients over there or TikTok or whatever, you have to have a fully optimized profile. If you need to learn how to do that, you should definitely join the Academy and we will help you figure that out. However, it definitely includes a whole lot of usage of keywords. Do not do it in an inhumane way. Make sure you do it with tact and you optimize your boards, your pins, your, your display name, you claim your domain, all of those things. I could ramble on, make a whole video about a fully optimized profile. Pretty sure I have one. I might link it here but you have to have a fully optimized profile. Absolutely, full stop. Number five, this one is actually new. This is a new best practice and I'm super excited about it. And this is adding a banner to the top of your Pinterest profile. Used to, it was a full page banner of just pins across the top. Then they shrunk it down and gave you the ability to upload your own banner. So it's a smaller like 1600 by something little, section, you could upload a video there or you could upload a standard static image there. I would definitely make sure to upload a fully optimized banner to that area. If you want to see mine, you can see it here. And you notice that I have an image of myself and a singular call to action that I want people to go take action on when they see my profile. Number six is definitely new. I used to say that this was an utter waste of time, but my work wife, Jana, my clubhouse co-mod, co-founder of the Profitable Pinterest Club has brought me around to using board covers. With the invention of idea pins, pushing people to your profile, more people are going to your profile now. I really think that a fully optimized profile actually includes board covers and you can actually see board covers on my own profile now as I recently revamped it. And I will say, when you add your board covers, you can either do a tall pin or square, so two by three or one by one, but make sure you fully optimize that board cover because when I uploaded my own to Pinterest, I was actually getting traffic to my website from those board covers. So don't just throw them up there with no link and it's dead on the platform. Make sure you optimize them and then assign it to your board. Number seven, you don't need to repin other people's content anymore. It is no longer a best practice to repin other people's content anymore. There is still a ton of outdated stuff out there, a ton of outdated suggestions for, you know, pinning 80% of your content and 20% of some, someone else's or whatever. Those were always made up. They were never actually real. And Pinterest doesn't care if you repin other people's content. They just care that you are creating really quality content with purpose that are that's helping their pinners, your audience on Pinterest to achieve that do buy or try, that inspiration that they're seeking, that life change, that life moment. They want to make sure that you're doing that versus just spamming their platform with pins. So no longer a best practice for you to actually repin any, anybody's content, which is why a lot of the Tailwind communities, formerly known as tribes, aren't as effective anymore. But we'll talk about that in another video. If you are down for some Pinterest marketing support in 2022, you should definitely come and join us in the Academy. The link for the Academy is down below. And Obviously, you can learn from me here or on Clubhouse. If you want more Pinterest marketing videos, head right on over here, and I will see you next week.